Welcome to Biology 182 video series on vertebrates. This video will cover amniotes, specifically reptiles and birds. Students should be able to describe the evolutionary characteristics of amniotes, and students should under understand the class types of amniotes and orders of reptiles. This is an amniotic egg, which differentiates other organisms from amniotes. The amniotic egg has some severe evolutionary adaptations to help in order to keep it living over time away from an aquatic environment. First of all, the amniotic egg has an amnion, which protects the embryo. It's a fluid filled sac that the embryo is found within. The amniotic cavity surrounds the embryo and holds the fluid. The elantoi contains waste from the embryo, and it gets bigger as the embryo gets older. There's a chorion, which allows the gas exchange across the allantoy membrane. There's a yolk sac, which encloses a reserve of nutrients, which gets smaller as the embryo gets older. There's also albumin, which is like the white part of the egg and the egg shell. When we look at amphibians and reptiles, we can see that amniotes have some additional characteristics. Vertebrates are all animals with a backbone. Tetrapods are animals with four limbs. Amniotes are animals with self-contained eggs that can hatch on their own, although they may need to be kept warm by a parent. When we're looking at these, they have a desiccation resistance, which means they do not have to exist near water in order to survive. They have a thoracic breathing, so they don't breathe through their skin. They use fully developed lungs. They have kidneys that can serve water, so they don't need to be near water all the time. And they have internal fertilization. Amniotes consist of reptiles, birds, and mammals. Reptiles have scales, as well as dry skin. They live on land and lay their eggs on land. Their eggs have a hard shell. And they slither or crawl. Both reptiles and amphibians are vertebrates. They can be oviparous or they can be viviparous. Um, they can walk and they have lungs, although amphibian lungs are not as well developed. Amphibians conversely have moist skin. They can live on land, but generally like to live near the water. They lay their eggs in water in soft, transparent shells. They breathe through gills as babies and through skin and lungs as adults. And they like to swim and jump. And they undergo metamorphosis. There are various types of reptiles. We'll look at the turtle and the tortoise. We'll look at lizards like chameleons and snakes. We'll look at geckos and skinks and crocodiles. Alligators are a species of the crocodilian family. Skinks are a family of lizard. Chameleons are a family of the iguana, which is a suborder of the lizard. And geckos are a family of geckoda, a suborder of the lizard. Tortoises internal and turtles are both in the family testidine, which is an order of the reptiles. Reptiles share several characteristics. They are ectothermic. They are covered with dry scales. They reproduce by laying amniotic eggs. And they have three chambered hearts and a cloaca. Reptiles have two reproductive strategies, oviparous and viviparous. Oviparous reptiles deposit their egg into an external nest, where viviparous reptiles retain the egg and give birth to live young. There are 9,000 species of snakes and lizards, 15% of which to 20% are viviparous, but 80% lay eggs. When we look at the animal kingdom, we have the phylum chordata and the subphylum vertebrata. We go to the class reptilia and then we see the orders. The tuatara we'll talk about. Then we have squamata, which are snakes and lizards. Chelonia, which is turtles and tortoises, and crocodilia, which is alligators and crocodiles. 
So first we'll talk about Tuatara. Tuatara, there are only two living species and they are found in New Zealand. They are the closest relative to an extinct group of reptiles from the dinosaur time. So they're often referred to as a living fossil. Now, personally to me, they look very similar to an iguana. However, they are not. They are called tuatara because they have a spiky scaled crest on their heads. The coolest thing about them, they have a photoreceptive third eye. It does have skin that will grow over it over time. Their teeth are fused into their jawbone and their tongue is faster than a cricket. They don't have ears, but they can hear. The next order, squamata, are snakes and lizards. There are over 3,500 species of snake and 600 are poisonous. Of the 600, 200 could kill or significantly wound a human. They swallow their food whole. They have scales to trap moisture and reduce friction so they can slither because they don't have legs. They have a hinged upper jaw, but they have an unhinged lower jaw. So it independently moves the lower two mandibles and it separates the two pieces of the mandible to be able to swallow huge food items. The limb formation doesn't occur in snakes because it's missing the SHH gene found in other reptiles. They're still cold blooded and they hibernate in cold weather. They don't have eyelids, although they do have a clear lens over the eye. They don't have visible ear holes and they do have a forked tongue. And they lay eggs, except for a few species that have live young. And they have a kinetic skull, which means that it can move apart. So it can change the shape of the bones um, and allow itself to eat much larger prey. The next group, Squamata, are the snakes and lizards. There are about 6,270 species of lizard. They're cold-blooded, and again, they have a hinged upper and lower jaw in the lizard portion. They're egg-laying, except for a few species that hatch inside their mother, and they smell with their tongue. They have movable eyelids, unlike the snake, but a few have the eye shields like the snake does. They have a long body and a long tail. They don't have ear flaps. Many of them can regenerate their tail if it is um, removed from, the, from their body. And they often communicate via color. In the top images, you can see two tailed lizards. These are actually lizards, not just a lizard who had its tail cut in half and regenerated both sides of the tail. It's actually born with two our next order is Chelonia or testidines. These are the turtles and the tortoises. When we look at turtles, they are, are about 356 species, converse to the 49 species of tortoise. Tortoise is a subspecies of the turtle. Turtles are cold blooded and they have a hard protective shell. They do have vertebrae and their vertebrae and ribs form the shell they hook together to form the shell. They have no teeth, but they have a very sharp beak. They lay eggs on land, usually in the sand, and they're omnivores. They have front limbs that look like flippers and back limbs that are webbed for better swimming. Their shells are really flat um, and it makes them more aquadynamic, so they're better swimmers. Where tortoises are exclusively land organisms, they're about 200 million years old and their shell is called the scutes, which is made of keratin. They're usually vegetarian and they have these huge back limbs and clubbed front limbs. And their shell is round or domed. It's easy to tell the difference between a tortoise and a turtle based on the limbs and the face alone. Our next order are crocodilians. There are 24 species of crocodile and two of those species are alligators. Crocodilians have, um, are ectothermic, they're cold blooded, and they have very thick skin. They have ear slits that allow for excellent hearing and a four chambered heart, just like mammals. They have vertical pupils, which enhances their vision at night, and their eyes are located on the top of their head. They have sensory organs on their body that help them detect movement in the water. 
and they have about 4,000 to 8,000 teeth in their lifetime. They just shed teeth like sharks. Their jaws have 5,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. Like a human's jaw is only 100 pounds of pressure per square inch. They release heat through their mouth and it's kind of like a dog. So they pant more with their mouth open. They, release, um, they can hold their breath for up to an hour and they like to hibernate in cold weather. They swallow their food whole or they rip it in chunks by shaking their head. So often when you see a crocodile eat, it will take its prey and throw it up in the air and swallow it whole. They have webbed hind feet to help them become better swimmers and a paddle-like tail. They are carnivorous and can actually survive for months in between feedings. Finally, we'll talk about the order Aves, which evolved from an ancestor in common with dinosaurs. Their closest living relative to a bird is a crocodile. There are about 10,400 species of bird. They have four chambered hearts, just like mammals, and they have double circulation. They have hollow bones, which helps them fly, and air sacs that keeps them more buoyant. They have feathers on their wings, unlike bats, and they have bird vision, which lets them see things that are very small from far away. They have a very rapid metabolism um, because they need all that extra energy for flight, and they're carnivorous. They have scales on their feet and legs, and they lay eggs. Students should be able to differentiate between amphibians and reptiles. Students should be able to differentiate between classes of amniotes. Students should be able to identify major characteristics in reptiles and should be able to indicate the characteristics of birds.